if we don't expect anything in return and our intentions aren't always to get an ROI, our intentions aren't always to sign a new prospect, new customer. If, if 80, 90% of the time we are putting value out in the marketplace, God will bless us with the returns. I know he has me and I know he will for you too. Great experiences build great leaders. Great leaders build great teams. This is Building Great Sales Teams. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Building Great Sales Teams. I've got a solo episode for you guys today. And this one is impromptu because uh, I had an appointment and they no-showed me, you know? And it was an appointment that all the value was coming from my end, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I know what you're gonna say. And uh, especially if you know how this stuff happens in the first place. So I still get on calls with people one-on-one to try and help them with their business whether they're going to buy a product of mine or hire me or not. And um, I just, you know, and maybe it's going to be a problem for me in the future. I'm just, I'm just documenting and and letting you guys know what's going on. This, this happens from time to time, but it is rare. I will say it is rare. Usually when people book a call with me, um, they, they, they show up. Um, Unfortunately, you know, this is a, a younger guy. It was a you know a bit of a mentor mentee uh, setup, you know, and I was and I was really excited about it. But I you know you got to know when you put yourself out there like this, and uh, that that people eventually are gonna you know sometimes not show up. That's the risk we take, right? And so, anyways, um, this episode is all about flood the marketplace with value. Build your pipeline with relationships. You know, uh, I definitely want to start doing more solo episodes. I definitely want to start speaking more about the basics. Even if you put episode an episode from two hundred episodes ago against this one, and I'm I'm talking about the same principles because new people are listening. And sometimes I do. I was talking to Drewby about this last night on my on our live episode where we're promoting the event coming up July twelfth. I was talking to him about this last night, you know, sometimes you need to be reminded of the basics. And every time I hear Drewby speak, some part of his speech, even though I've heard it several times, reminds me of the basics, you know, and reminds me to keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing in that respect. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about, and of course, I I posted it on my social media this morning. So I wanted to, to show you guys that to, so you can kind of see you know, the kind of where this stuff comes from and, and, and how I leverage it and how it also kind of fills my cup. You know what I'm saying? So that was my post this morning, flood the marketplace with value, build your pipeline with relationships. Let's grow. Um, I just posted that before I actually, yeah, before I got on and did this episode here, uh, it is my birthday today. So this is technically a birthday episode and, uh, you know, you see my wife tag me in a post there. Okay, let's talk about going live and 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 doing this event. So this event that I've got coming up um, will more than likely not make me any money, okay? Uh, in the very immediate sense, right? So it's 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 kind of twofold. You know, this event is an authority builder, right? It is um, it's a networking tool, you know? And so, but the idea behind it is I'm going to recruit or recruit. I'm going to advertise to people that have never met me or never seen my content before to come to this event. And so it's going to expand my network locally here in San Antonio. I'm very excited about that. Um, And so those are all good things. Not necessarily good business decisions though, because if the event's not profitable and I'm spending, you know, I've probably already got at least 30 or 40 hours into it. 
um, that's a big negative pool on my balance sheet, right? The, an unseen negative pool. And so I want to make sure that you guys understand the instinct to do an event like this was not to make a bunch of money. You know, I know that uh, long term, some of the people that attend this event will maybe execute some of the strategies or they'll say, hey, I'm just going to hire Doug to do it myself. And then the event will then become profitable as a lead generation tool, right? Um, but the instinct to do it was to make an impact in the San Antonio community. Because anytime I have met somebody in home services, somebody with a sales org, somebody that is, you know, has a sales-centric business, anytime I have met them, um, I've been able to add a lot of value, you know? So I know this event will make an impact. I know my friends that are coming to this event will make an impact, even if I fall flat on my face and don't provide any value, which we know is not going to happen. I've been doing this too long to let that happen, right? And so that's why I'm doing the event. But again, you know, flood the marketplace with value. That's what this event is. It is flooding the marketplace with value. The, you know, and, what, and one of the things I said to my, my uh, sponsor, Ciro, which is an AI coaching tool, uh, one of the sponsors for the event is this is not this is about the event the day of, but it's about the marketing leading up to the event. You know, it, it's all organic and it's going to be packed with lives like this one with Drewby. And it's going to be packed with value, you know. And so when I talk about flood the marketplace with value, yes, I'm mainly talking about social media, but, you know, it's also, you know, doing. You know, no matter what business you're in, you have a level of expertise in that particular business. Even if you're just starting out, you're a step above someone that isn't in that business, right? A, a potential consumer that needs to be educated on why they should have those services, right? And so one of the things I always tell budding entrepreneurs is you need to educate your marketplace. You need to educate your following, even if it's just your mom and your family and your friends on social media. You need to educate them not on what you do on the your industry though and, and and yes that's going to end up educating them on 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 what you do so if we walk through these posts you know obviously a lot of promotion for the event right now um you know we can talk about the podcast right my instinct to do the podcast at the time i had a seven figure sales org i was making all of my money from my business you know i was not making money consulting i was not making money on stages or um, you know, with fractional uh, CSO or fractional integrator stuff. So the instinct for the podcast was to provide value to the marketplace. And I'm not saying you have to lead with that instinct and in everything that you do. I'm saying that if you lead with that instinct and in everything you do, it will result in business. So I did that for a year before I even transitioned or eight months before I even transitioned to consulting full time. And then when I did transition to consulting, I had a hundred thousand dollar pipeline right away. Because I had put enough value in the marketplace, I had poured into enough people for them to say, hey, Doug's consulting now, I can hire him and I can expect deliverables from him versus just a conversation that's going to tell me what to do. He can actually do it for me, right? And so that's where the podcast is coming from and that's how I'm flooding the marketplace there. So let's look at some of this other stuff, okay? Uh, and, and, and guys, this was an impromptu deal that I'm doing right now. So what I am showing you, I did not like set this up. You know, this is just what I am doing every day to attract the business that I want to have, you know. And so when we look at uh, Success Champions Networking, Success Champ Champions Networking is a great organization. You know, they probably provide about 5x the value that a BNI does. And what I love about it, it's a mix of education, inspiration, and connection, right? And... You know, it's in a marketplace or it's in a, uh, a lot of people in this group, you know, because a lot of people look at groups and they're like, hey, how can I get business from this group? That's the wrong way to look at it. You should look at groups and say, how can I build relationships that refer me business? And if you look at networking that way, you're always going, you're never going to be disappointed because when you do get the referrals, then it's exactly what you came in to do, but you're not expecting to come in and get business, business from those people directly. And so that's incredibly important. But anyway, Success Champions Networking, I went and spoke at one of their events on a panel, on a sales panel, and I saw their organization. 
I saw how well run it was. I saw how well how well marketed the event was. And I was very inspired and impressed by Donnie and his organization. And so when I found out there wasn't a chapter in San Antonio, I said, well, what do we do, Doug? I mean, there's not a chapter, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, you, you can't really participate. You could probably join a national chapter, but that's the same as a lot of the groups that you're in now. There's not, you know, I wanted more local business long term. I wanted more local impact. And so I decided to start the Alamo City Entrepreneurs Chapter of Success Champions Network. And uh, it's been it's been fantastic, you know, and to date, I've been doing this roughly uh, between training and launching, you know, training for three or four months, launching uh launched three or four months now we have 10 paid members now and um we're already making an impact in the community with events like this you know where i did a sales toolkit and i taught and everything and you got to realize that right away i'm recognizing that hey the people at this event you know aren't necessarily my client you know they're they're solopreneurs entrepreneurs um they have uh uh, solo operated businesses, you know, um, and or they're in life insurance, you know, like the the immediate sale is not there for me, you know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm not looking at it that way. I'm looking at it like these are my people. I'm going to pour into them. And then when the time comes that they come across someone else or when the time comes that their company says, hey, we need we need to invest in our sales program or our sales training. We need somebody to come and speak that all this stuff is interconnected. The, the, the problem is, and, and I was lucky. I started from a place of, I already had my main income, so I didn't need to make sales and consulting. Right. And so that helped me build value, flood the, the marketplace with value and things that people could listen to an episode and execute in their business or things that people could read my social media posts and execute in their business that, that allowed me to do that for a long time to where it became my standard operating system. Now, if I had to start all over tomorrow and I was selling life insurance or something like that, I would not be in a position to spend all this time laying groundwork for organic guerrilla marketing and social media and value-based interactions and, and, and still feed my family. You know what I'm saying? So I recognize the difference there. But I will say this. I will say this, like you need to schedule, you need to schedule these type of things into your, into your social media posts. You need to schedule these type of things into your networking. It needs to be part of it, maybe 10 to 20%. The social media posts definitely, look, none of you guys listening to this, and, and honestly, most people in this world, 99% of people in this world do not have anything proprietary. You are not special. You have not invented anything you know what i'm saying and, and and that's not what you expect to hear from a guy like me but it's true 99 percent of the people i interact with have nothing proprietary okay and that's just the reality of the situation uh nothing that i ever teach i did you know i learned it all from someone else or i learned it by doing the damn thing for 13 years but it's all frankenstein you know what i'm saying and and the value that I have in the marketplace is my ability to lay it out in a learnable and executable process and structure. And then, and then, yeah, in the moment when we're solving problems, I'm a very good problem solver. So that's the value I bring to the marketplace. None of it, nothing I'm going to say or nothing I'm going to do has never been done before. I mean, that's just, that's, that's real. Okay. And so Stop thinking that you need to hold back in your post because your customer won't buy because you already gave them the advice or you already gave them the knowledge. You need to put it all out there. You need to flood the marketplace with value if you want the best clients. If you want the clients that are going to, I've never had a client ask me for a discount. I have never had a client ask me for a discount. I've never had a client ask me for a deal. I have done deals for clients because I enjoy working with them. I enjoy the work we get to do together and I want to see them succeed. And it's like, okay, maybe I'll do, I have a, a service called podcast partners. Maybe I'll do podcast partners and I'll discount that because my fractional integration client wants to launch a podcast, you know? And so maybe I'll do something like that, but they're already 
you know, they're already a, a, a 10 figure client, you know what I mean? On an annual basis. So that's, uh, that's where that comes from. So again, flood the marketplace with value, build your pipeline with relationships, you know? So here I'm speaking about the new, um, FTC ruling on, uh, non-competes. And, and again, this is, this is another subject that I'll touch on briefly. Again, most of the things you're doing are not proprietary. They're not special. You learn them for someone else. This idea that when someone comes into your organization and you train them how to do something, that you lock them down with a non-compete is ridiculous. Who locked you down with a non-compete when they trained you how to do something? Chances are you left their company and started your own business. You know, it's just, it's just, it's the most hypocritical thing I've ever seen. I've never enforced a non-compete. I had them in my original 1099 contracts because it was part of the template that there would be a non-compete in there. And, you know, I adjusted like three months, six months or something like that. But guess what had happened when it came to brass tax? When somebody left my company, I did nothing. Because if they don't want to be here, why am I going to try to hold them here? Or why am I going to stop their income for three to six months? That's just, that's a scarcity mindset and not an abundance mindset. Now, don't get me wrong. I've let my emotions get to me. I've let, I've let, anti-logic take over and i've threatened people before because i was upset and i was a young entrepreneur doing stupid things you know i've definitely done that but actually sued someone over non-compete or actually went after someone or even i haven't even sent a cease and desist the only time i sent a cease and desist is when somebody threatened my life and my family because you know, it happens. If you're a business owner, somebody's going to feel like they get screwed over, even though you have documentation, data, and and reports from your clients showing that that they got paid what they should get paid. And so let's walk through some more of this. Um, speaker announcement, right? I'm speaking at uh, Adam McChesney's event, Builders of Authority Live. So there's two reasons I'm speaking at this. I believe in what Adam's doing. I believe in Adam. He's a good friend of mine. And... Um, you know, we have a um, mutual interest in win rate consulting. We're both coaches for that company. And um, I want to see him win. I want to see him succeed. So I sponsored Builders of Authority Live, and I'm going to be speaking on stage again, providing value. And then I believe that the ones that will will come to me. I don't need to pitch from stage. I need to give them value, and the ones that will will come to me. Now, the sec the, another thing that I recognize in this is that right now I'm selling time for money. So I can only take on so many clients. A lot of you have businesses that you need volume and you need maybe 100 clients, 200, 300 clients a year in order for your business to do well. I understand that. And that's why you pitch from stage or that's why you run ads or, or what you need a, a more immediate transaction after somebody meets you, you know or after somebody gets into your pipeline. Whereas mine is longer term relationship build and then and then we close them. But here's a beautiful thing about you smaller transaction guys. You can do both. You can 100% you know, um, pitch when you need to pitch, close when you need to close, but also flood the marketplace with value and build and 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 build your pipeline and relationships. Except yours is a little different, which mine mine is this too, but your relationships are going to be referral partnerships and they're going to send you constant business because you've, you've given them value. You've flooded the marketplace with value and you've taken really good care of their clients, you know? So you're still building your pipeline with relationships in that respect. All right. There's some more success champion stuff. Um, I uh, got to get the family in there. Got to support um, some more success champion stuff there. Okay, I mean, here's here's an easy one. Uh, I get guest on a podcast. Um, I love being a guest because I'm a host so much. And when you're a guest, you get to just lay it on, lay on the value. And that's exactly what we did in this episode. And it was exciting because I had three subject matter experts around me when we did this podcast. And I was just pouring into every one of them. They were pouring into me. And whoever is going to listen to this podcast is going to get, again, a ton of value, right? Um, I have right now, I believe, 
five reels that come out every week. One reel on Monday for the new episode, one reel on Thursday for another new episode. And then I have three uh, consulting reels that come out. Now, um, this is part of a social media marketing strategy, 100% that gets me clients. But it's it's all I also understand at face value. Um, initially, it doesn't it doesn't give me any business. It I have to build a relationship, which this is part of that in order to get that business. So you got to be okay with that. And I am spending money on this. Like I have a a, a team of three that do nothing but social media and editing. Now they also work for podcast partners, which is my other business. Um, so they're doing that as well, but their time spent on this is, is, is costing me, you know what I'm saying? And their time spent on, on podcast partners too, obviously, but there's a, a clients on that side. So they're paying for that for the most part. So this is an investment that I made initially and, um, my team started working on and, and now their editing has just gotten fantastic since we've, uh, we've added more team members. So again, blood the marketplace with value. This is something that I'm investing personally in, which is my son's baseball team. There's Cameron and 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 Logan. But you guys get the point. Um, yeah, this is another uh business that I'm starting where I'm opening up uh, a content and podcast studio. I'm excited about that. And and but the same thing with that. So guess what I'm gonna do at that content and podcast studio? I'm gonna host. Uh, content workshops. I'm going to host podcast workshops. I'm going to host um, work, uh, general workshops, sales workshops, all that good stuff. I want to invest in my local marketplace because I know that in-person relationships are going to build my pipeline like crazy. And I don't need the person in front of me to be a prospect in order to pour into them, you know? And, I, and, and again, you know, today was a testament. It's not always the greatest business model. But I'm going to implore you guys to at least on social media, you don't have to get on all the calls that I do. You know, I probably take like three to four calls a week that, you know, I know that they're not prospects before we even get on the call. But again, networking has value. Networking has an ROI. And um, even if it is just one sided, dude, that 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 feeds your spirit. That enriches your soul. You know, I don't want to get too woo -woo on you guys, but. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what God put me on this earth for, is to help other people. And if all of us took that attitude, if all we're doing is helping each other, you know what I mean? And not expecting anything in return, God is going to bless us with the returns. Let me say that again. <clears throat> if we don't expect anything in return, and our intentions aren't always to get an ROI. Our intentions aren't always to sign a new prospect, new customer. If, if 80, 90% of the time we are putting value out in the marketplace, God will bless us with the returns. I know he has me and I know he will for you too. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, I, you know, this is the ask, right? I have an event coming up. You, you guys, if you have been listening for a few episodes now, you know it's July 12th. Incredibly excited about it. Building great sales teams 24. I'm going to have my Claudio, Drewby Wilson, Donnie Boyveen, Neil Kaiser, Mark Bielik, a door to door panel, a recruiting panel. And I'm going to be pouring into the audience as well, breaking down Kodak and all the documents that support great sales teams. And there's going to be some amazing, amazing companies there um, sponsoring, not pitching from stage. <laughs> And I would love, love to have you guys or love if you would share, share the event. Obviously, I'm doing plenty of event posts that you guys can share and stuff like that. So uh, thank you for your support thus far. I know I have a few people that have been listening since episode one, since episode 20, since episode 50. And I appreciate you guys as well. Even if you're just catching one episode every 20 or so. I've put out a lot over the years now. So um God bless. Please leave a review, share the episode, and thank you guys.